When you look at the leg, notice how similar it is to the arm. Both are the appendicular style skeletal system. Notice how the hips could be considered a sort of modified scapula. The same idea of a large flat attachment site for muscles still applies. In the shoulder, we looked at the rotator cuff muscles, and in the hip, we have a similar group of muscles, the hip rotators. First, let's look at the skeleton and notice one mistake. Every skeleton that you see has a hole here in the pelvis. In the living body, this hole is actually a thick piece of fascia that covers this area. This creates a large flat attachment site for muscles. On one side is the obturator internus. On the other side of the same bone, we have the obturator externus, which attaches just a little further down to the greater trochanter. This muscle is best viewed from below because from this angle, you can see how it's a straight shot into the insertion point on the greater trochanter. Because of these two muscle positions and the attachments, they pull the greater trochanter back and inwards, which externally rotates the leg. Right next to the obturator internus are the two small gemelli muscles, the gemelli superior and inferior. These muscles are filled with sensory cells that pick up the position of the femur. And these two muscles are thought to be more of a sensory feedback system than prime movers. The two gemelli muscles and the two obturator muscles are often referred to as the Go-Go's. This acronym is a great way to remember their order from top to bottom. The other two powerful external rotators are the quadratus femoris here and the piriformis. You may know about the piriformis because the sciatic nerve goes right under it. And in a few people, the nerve actually goes right through the muscle on its way down the leg. The muscles that abduct the leg, as in the shoulder, lie above and on the side of the joint. The gluteus medius is here. And deep underneath the gluteus minimus. Because the insertion point of the gluteus minimus is a little forward, when it contracts, it internally rotates the leg as well as abducts it. The anterior fibers of the gluteus medius also internally rotate, along with the tensor fascia lata, which is the most superficial muscle. On the front, or anterior side, the muscles that cross the hip joint are the iliacus, the psoas, the pectineus, and most superficially, the rectus femoris. These four muscles flex the hip. The rectus femoris also crosses the knee joint, so it can extend the knee as well. The rectus femoris is part of the quadriceps. The word quad means four, and the word seps means heads, so four-headed muscle. We can see the same terminology in the biceps muscle and triceps muscle. The other quadriceps muscles are the vastus medialis, its name basically meaning the big muscle on the inside, the vastus intermedius, which is deep to the rectus femoris, and the vastus lateralis on the lateral side, meaning the big muscle on the outside. These four muscles make up the quadriceps group, and they all extend the knee. I hope this gives you a good start to understanding how the muscles of the leg work.